Hey, welcome to another lesson of Make Science Easy. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at specialized cells. This lesson is building on concepts that you have learnt in previous lessons. If you've not watched or didn't fully understand the lessons on cells or life processes, then I recommend that you do watch them before taking this lesson, because you will need to understand the concepts covered in those lessons. Here are the basic plant and animal cells. You should know all the different parts of the cells and what they all do. If you don't know what they all do, then it's probably worthwhile you watching the previous lessons. What are specialized cells? Well, it's important to remember that plants and animals are multicellular. What does this mean? It means they are made up of lots and lots of cells. Some living things are unicellular, things like bacteria. They only contain one cell. But for specialized cells, we are only looking at multicellular organisms. In multicellular organisms, different cells have different jobs. And each of these different jobs helps one of the seven life processes. Remember, Mrs. Gren. Each type of specialized cell is adapted. This means they've got special features that help them to do their job. Other cells cannot do their job. Specialized cells tend to all look different. They're different because they all do a different job. If you're doing some carpentry, your hammer is going to look very different to your saw. Why? Because they do a different job. Specialized cells have different adaptations and they look different to do a different job. Inside the human body, there are hundreds of different types of specialized cells. We're gonna look at a few of these today, but don't worry, you're not expected to know them all. When we look at our specialized cells, you need to try and work out a few things. I'm gonna give you the information about some, but you need to be thinking about the following things. When you see the picture, what special features do they have? How are they different from our idealized cells? What do you think the job of the cell is? How do those adaptations help the cell do its job? If you can understand these things, then you're well on your way to understanding what's going on. Our first specialized cell is a sperm cell. And we can see a little video of sperm cells swimming along. These are very, very strange for animal cells. They are motile. Motile means they can move and they can choose where they go. No other cell in your body is motile. In order to do their job, they have lots and lots of adaptations. The first thing to recognize is they also have a special name. They are called gametes. Gametes are set cells. Sperm cells are also the smallest cell in the human body. In order to do their job, which is to fertilize an egg, they need to be able to move. They have a special whip-like tail called a flagellum. This helps them swim just like a tadpole's tail does. Some bacteria have got flagellum as well. They're really, really useful for cells trying to move. Sperm cells are also streamlined. It helps them to move more easily. They're not being forced back through whatever they're swimming through. Sperm cells contain large number of mitochondria. What do mitochondria do? They convert glucose and oxygen into energy for the cell. Because sperm cells are moving, they need an awful lot of energy. Sperm cells also contain a special enzyme called an acrosome. This helps to digest the outer layer of an egg cell so that the sperm cell can get inside of it. Our sperm cell looks very different to the idealized cell. If you just look at a sperm cell, it has many different features but it is still an animal cell. It still has all the basic features, a nucleus, a membrane, cytoplasm, mitochondria. It has all the features of an animal cell, but it is specialized for its job. Our next specialized cell is the partner of the sperm cell. It is the female gamete. It is the ovum or the egg cell. It's also got lots of adaptations. It's the largest cell in the body. So whereas the sperm cell was the smallest, the egg cell is the largest. It's the size of a pencil dot. You could almost see it with your eye if it was isolated on its own. They're surprisingly similar to chicken eggs. They contain yolk. These provide nutrients for a developing fetus so that it can grow. What do you notice about this? It helps the life processes. It provides nutrition for growth. All specialized cells help the seven life processes. So in our ovum, we've got nutrition, we've got growth, and obviously, we have got reproduction. You can also guarantee there'll be mitochondria in there, so we have respiration. Moving on from our reproductive cells, our gametes, our next specialized cell is called a neuron. A neuron helps to carry signals around your body. 
Your brain needs to send information around your body. Your brain sends messages to the rest of your body and it receives information back from your body. It links into the life process of sensitivity. It also links into the life process of movement because your nerve cells, your neurons, tell your muscles to move. These cells have got lots of adaptations. They're very long. This allows signals to pass along them much more easily. They're insulated with something called a myelin sheath. This means the signal can travel faster and it doesn't get lost. You can almost think about neurons like an electric wire. Electricity is passing backwards and forwards up the wire. They're long, they carry signals, and they're insulated so that the electricity isn't lost. This is basically what a neuron is doing. It's carrying signals around your body so your body can respond to stimuli. Also, at the end of your neuron, you have lots and lots of connections. This means the signal is passed on more easily and it allows the signals to travel in lots of different places. Lots of neurons together are called a nerve. Our next animal cell is our red blood cell, a vital cell. Again, if we think about the life processes, it helps respiration. It helps to carry oxygen around the body for that vital chemical reaction. And that's the main feature of a red blood cell, to carry oxygen around our body. Again, has lots and lots of special features. Contains a chemical called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin's made of iron, which gives it its red color. The red blood cell has a biconcave shape. Think of it almost like a donut. It helps to increase the surface area. A larger surface area means that the red blood cell can carry more oxygen. Carry more oxygen means that more respiration can happen. The red blood cell is also very unique. It does not have a nucleus. This is very, very strange. And the reason why it doesn't have a nucleus is again, so more oxygen can be carried. More oxygen, as we've already said, means more respiration. Vitally important cells. The red blood cell is also very flexible. This means it can travel through small gaps and can get to everywhere in your body. Nowhere in your body is ever far away from a red blood cell because nowhere in your body can afford to be away from oxygen. Also traveling in our blood are the white blood cells. White blood cells have a completely different job to the red blood cell. They do not carry oxygen. They do not carry nutrients. They are part of the body's immune system. The immune system helps to fight off disease. Anything that comes into your body that shouldn't be there, your white blood cells will attack. They will kill. There are a number of different ways that they can kill them. They can create things called antibodies, which make the invaders stick together. They can engulf the invaders and digest them. White blood cells are your body's defences. They help to protect you from disease. These are just a few of the animal cells in our body. As I've said, there are hundreds of different types of animal cells. We don't need to know them all. But it's important that you recognise when a cell is an animal cell. It's also important that you start to think about the uses of those animal cells and how they are adapted to do their jobs. We're now going to look at some specialised plant cells. The first one we're going to look at is called a guard cell. Just from looking at this picture, we can tell that it's a plant cell and not an animal cell. We can see a cell wall. It's kind of hard to spot, but it is there. There are chloroplasts. These are only found in plant cells, so it's definitely not an animal cell. It has to be a plant cell. And guard cells are specialised cells in leaves. They're found at the bottom of the leaf. They open and close to allow gases in and out of the cell. This is important for two life processes, for nutrition and for respiration. Plant cells need glucose and oxygen, just like animal cells, for respiration. But they don't get their glucose from consuming things or eating things, they get it from photosynthesis. Photosynthesis needs oxygen. It's vital that guard cells open and close to allow gases in and out of the leaves to allow these processes to happen. In summary, all multicellular organisms are made up of different specialised cells. Each specialised cell is adapted to perform a particular function. Every specialised cell has different features. These features allow it to do a job. Every specialised cell in a multicellular organism is adapted to help for one or more of the seven life processes. All specialised cells help with these life processes. They help to keep the organism alive. They do special jobs that other cells don't. If there's anything you haven't understood, if you're confused about any points, then re-watch your video. Make sure you understand. These are really, really key ideas 
And when we come to look at the body systems in a few lessons time, it's going to be vitally important you understand these. Don't forget to use the resources to help your learning. If there's anything that you didn't understand or any questions you want to ask about this video, then make sure you write in the comments. I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I hope that I've made science easy for you. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe and like.